decision and it's our choice. You talk about rights and obviously there are political rights that we need to talk about and there are many many people now who on the one hand admire what you've done to bring Rwanda out of its post-genocide disaster and its nightmare and on the other hand are very critical about your what they call increasing authoritarianism the shrinking space for any kind of political opposition and that this is becoming more and more of an issue what I say to that there are things that don't add up here we have what you say elections we have Rwandans the 11 million people going out there and deciding for themselves who their leaders are going to be right from the president to members of parliament, to mayors, to different leaders. Now, the second is, you cannot at the same time have this progress we are making, whether it is in education, in agriculture, in health, in investment, in everything. This cannot be done just by one man dictating that it happens. It involves the population. Can you yes. say it's up to the Rwandan people? Yes. Here we have Maybe. the Green Party leader, Frank Habineza, who used to be a member of the ruling Rwandan Patriotic Front. Now he's talking about death threats. He's talking about harassment. He's talking about a newspaper that had a headline said, Frank Habineza to be killed in 60 days. He also has said, I am scared but I still believe a government should protect its citizens. I'm not a criminal, I just have different ideas. But, but Christian, do, you will have individuals saying anything they want to say depending on what or where they stand on issues. But you don't have to believe everyone who says whatever they want to say. Right. You have to go further than that and investigate and find out whether mm -hmm. this person is even saying the truth. But I guess the question I still am trying to probe is yes. whether there can be space for political opposition in President Paul Kagame's Rwanda. Oh, yes. And That's so why. far, it seems that it's very tough. Let's take Victoire no, in Gabiré. Before we leave that, that's why the Green Party is there. That's why this person you're talking about is there saying what they are saying. Now, if this person says the government wants to do this, why hasn't the government done that if that's what he wants to do? But he's saying that he's being prevented. But he's there. He's there. He's so will he be able to contest the elections? Absolutely. In safety if, and security? Yes. Uh, but as I told you, all of us play by certain rules. There are issues of accountability for all of us, even for me, the president. For any individual, for a citizen, there are issues of accountability. That's why there is a law. So if he follows what the measures of accountability are requesting, why not? Absolutely. But I guess what people are saying is that the goalpost keeps shifting, that the it has level a, it has playing a, field it has doesn't exist. Well, let, let's take Victoire Ingabire. Yes. Now, she's the president of the FDU in Giri, and she says she's faced a very intense public campaign of vilification. Uh, basically, you have openly warned her that she could face prosecution under Rwanda's genocide ideology laws. No, but you see, and you, people you, are saying that you use those to quash political no, opposition. I, I don't think it, it's just an insult to us or to the nation. So let me talk about Ingabire. Ingabire came to Rwanda. He was not in Rwanda even during a genocide. He's been away from Rwanda for 17 years. He arrives, he comes, first of all, he asks for a travel document, a passport. The government gave him a passport. She comes to Rwanda, she wants to contest. The very day she arrived, she starts talking about double genocide. She starts saying, oh, this genocide of, you know, the Tutsis, but there was also a genocide of Hutus, and almost the same language, the old language of incitement. This is on a record. It's not something I'm creating. Now, of course, if you incite, if you are talking, if you are denying genocide, if you are trying to create... Is that what you're own, saying she's doing? That's what she's doing. And I'm saying those who defend him, or, or defend her, this woman of the other party, may find one day they've been defending a wrong person. Let me get to the issue of leadership uh, again, and this is about Congo. Africa's world war, millions of people have been killed there, mostly out of sight, and many say that Paul Kagame's troops bear a lot of the responsibility, that you sent the troops into there to keep back the Hutus and the extremists, you know, and more than five million have been killed. Do, do you know the history of Congo? 
Yes, the problems of Congo are more than 60 years old. That's true. That's so true. Let's not. But this no, no, started but, in but the 1998. No, the problem was started before I was born. <laughs> we had Leopold. <laughs> you I know the story all of you that. had. And all of the, the colonialism. So why, why, why do people keep all that quiet? Lock it up and then start saying the problems of Congo. It is the Kagame. Right. It's the troops. It's but just and, and let's talk about also how those who committed genocide in Rwanda went and lived in the Congo. How they benefited from the international community that were feeding them, spending one million dollars every day, feeding murderers, feeding people who would want to come back and kill people in Rwanda, and people want to keep quiet and say, "Oh, Kagame sent troops," as if there is no context for that. It doesn't make sense. So when this is will the issue of when will those troops? Be, I mean, clearly you have a reason for doing it. Some people say that it's a reason also an economic reason that you have a good you know hold on an area which is very rich in minerals which is very beneficial to Rwanda but but you see first of all where the Congo is I cannot be blamed for the problems of Congo or any other country there are people the Congolese who have their own country who are supposed to manage it who are supposed to govern it it has nothing to do with it thank you very much indeed for joining us thank it was you. nice to have you thank you